What is up, guys? Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. We're kicking things off on LiveCoinWatch.com. You can come to this website, type in the abbreviation or ticker for your said crypto asset, such as FLR, and it would pull up Spark right here at 62 cents. Now, massive disclaimer, this is merely an IOU. It is not live on any blockchain yet. Flare Networks will be launching this year. So I'm beyond excited, and I know this is 62 cents. And yes, I believe that we could actually launch at this price, $1, $10 in the future easily. However, on Poloniex, it's currently trading at around 11 to 12 cents. So please be smart. Um, I'm not, you know, recommending anybody to go all in on Flare at on either of these exchanges for the time being. If we claimed our assets properly, we know what's to come. So for example, you guys can find more on Flare Networks. You can go to the website. You can find it on Twitter. You can read about the blogs and see everyone that they're working with. I have added Gala to my long-term holdings as well, and I do want to support the ecosystem. And just like Ripple is truly innovating and doing something that has never been done before, essentially one of the first companies companies to leverage a digital asset as that bridge currency or that medium of exchange. Flare Networks, a Ripple funded initiative, is doing that same thing in terms of unlocking value in essentially creating interoperability between all of these fragmented blockchain networks. So if they succeed, you best believe that Spark could be reaching a very, very high valuation. There is sound demand. And please be aware of the tokenomics, the distribution that will be happening this year as they launch. So yes, I am beyond excited. Um, keep in mind, if you had 10,000 XRP and you claimed a spark, you would get a one-to-one -one ratio of 10,000 spark. Or let's say 100,000 XRP, you get 100,000 spark. Spark reaches a value of even just $10, and that is a $1 million profit because you got your spark for free entirely. So... Very exciting. Um, I don't want to, you know, over speculate, but um, of course, these are the things that we think about when we're counting sheep at night. So just wanted to point that out. All right. So you guys can find more, read about the Flare blogs, keep up to date, follow them on Twitter. Um, and I'm just beyond excited to look into ways to generate passive income as well. All right. Onward, and we'll get on with the Ripple rant and a bunch of information. So I took yesterday off, and I'm just playing catch up currently. I've been reading all day, and have a bunch of stuff I want to address, and I want to talk about the Tether lawsuit in the future as well. But I kind of want to um, get some information better together. All right, so currently, guys, we had the market pullback, terrifying everybody. Market cap is still at 1.5 trillion dollars. We just have to keep things into perspective. It is all a matter of perspective because before everybody starts panicking, emotions are low, you sell, you give up on this market. Remember, the total cryptocurrency market cap last year was around 100 to 300 billion. Today, we're still well over. We're at one and a half trillion. So just keep your perspective. Are we seeing something that's fundamentally wrong with this market that it's going to disappear forever? No. And I'm going to show you just a few reasons why I believe in this future, the future of this asset class in this one. All right. So we'll keep moving here. We can see that Tether continuously is printing. I know, you know, last week we we're at like 32 bill billion. We're at 34 eight. So we'll be watching that carefully. And I'll talk more about the lawsuit as well. <clears throat> Right here, this is old, but I don't care. I wanted to show this. And I had some newcomers, you know, appreciate, you know, saying, hey, I wasn't aware of this. Thank you. And I know I get a lot of flack for sharing old news, but I appreciate, you know, that type of thing when I know it helps somebody. So 2006, Google, the company buys YouTube for um, $1.65 billion. 2021, essentially, YouTube is generating well over a billion dollars in ad revenue every three weeks. Insane. For example, back in, we can see 2016, it was published, Google-backed blockchain startup Ripple raises $55 million from the banks. We know there's been several funding rounds. Um, we can see the big names right here, Accenture. Um, we know Google Ventures early on, Santander. We can talk about, you know, Anna um, uh, Boten, Botin. She's just a huge heavy hitter. We have SCB, Siam Commercial Bank, one of the largest commercial banks out of Thailand. Standard Chartered, obvious connections to China, as we've talked about with everything they're working on in their other platform, Axis or Access. Um, on and on and on. Yet, it's all a coincidence to some people. Right here. So in terms of the SEC lawsuit, I just wanted to read this paragraph and this one quote, and this is of Brad Garlinghouse's lawyer, Matthew, actually, I'm um, talking. So he's representing Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple right here, and he's claiming that the SEC had failed to warn market actors, including exchanges such as Coinbase, for example. Remember, Coinbase years ago said, you know, we can't list anything unless we know and we're certain it is not a security. Then they went on to list XRP. So we all were very excited. That was huge news. We expected a massive pump and, you know, nothing really happened. That was too crazy, to be honest. <clears throat> and then, of course, this year we see that Coinbase is able to list digital securities, so to speak. And I just want to read this right here, this quote. 
We've already taken some discovery on the SEC, which revealed that the SEC, or the Securities and Exchange Commission, was having discussions with ultra-sophisticated market actors, including exchanges, and not apparently telling those actors that it believed XRP was a security or an investment contract as of late 2019. That's my argument. They're probably going to get a slap on the wrist, pay some fines for early onset sales, things of that nature. But on a going forward basis, guys, XRP will be fine. It will thrive. In my opinion, that is not financial advice. And again, as this case moves forward, these facts will come to light and it will be clear that XRP cannot establish and will not establish that XRP is a security. Boom. This was just the lawyers and representatives of the company, Ripple, the firm Ripple, whatever you want to say, and some of these CEOs. I think they're going to be well covered. I just cannot wait until we get settlement because there's so many people that actually aren't keeping up with it and still doubt and think XRP is disappearing entirely. That is just a joke to me, and I'm not going to let them call us lucky when all is said and done. All right. So, Flair, encourage you guys to read more about that. Gala, beyond exciting. Um, I'm sure many of you guys are already, you know, I talked to a lot of people that are, you know, already operating a node and all good and great. Super cool. And right here, I'm going to speed through a few points. I highlighted some key points I want to cover. So the UAE, before we talk about them, the United Arab Emirates, we are well aware that Ripple actually moved one of their regional headquarters or relocated their regional headquarters to Dubai, one of the heaviest populated cities in the UAE. So right here we can see their capital is Abu Dhabi and Dubai right here. They are a very friendly fintech company. We know that Ripple actually moved to the hub where there's about 2,400 other fintech players. It just seems like the perfect place for me. You've heard Nevin Gupta of Ripple talk about the high remittance fees, seven to 10% in this region. That is unheard of. And honestly, that's just completely inappropriate that it is the year 2021. And that is still the way things are being hit in the world of transaction banking. You can see, I mean, oil reserves, everything. Just a very strong economy, in my opinion. Beautiful city. And I've never been, but I plan to be. So right here. For example, government-owned licensing firm, and I'm just going to say Kiklab, I'm going to butcher that name, allows clients to pay for their visa and trade license fees via various digital assets to the Dubai Financial Services Authority, which announced its decision to work on a holistic crypto regulatory framework as part of its 2021 business plan. We'll keep moving. Right here, as a result... Dubai's crypto-friendly policies ripple a firm that has recently been in murky waters with the U.S. SEC announced its decision to open an office in the region. Furthermore, the UAE and Saudi Arabia are reportedly working on a joint central bank digital currency research, research initiative that has been dubbed Project Aber, or Aber. Now, of course, CBDCs, whether retail or wholesale, they're being developed everywhere, people. Um, this is just more validation, more confirmation that you know, us lunatics are early and that we are right in this market. There's going to be private ecosystems, yeah, that will not be public facing whatsoever, um, but they're still going to be able to interconnect and interoperate with some of these open source technologies and digital assets that we are in, fa in fact buying and holding. That is not speculation that is happening today. So it's all about future proofing because they may not want to do it, but their competitors will and they'll get the edge. So they're going to be forced to adopt and interoperate and connect to our open source technology. So commenting on why the UAE is fast becoming the destination of choice for some crypto and blockchain startups. Right here, many countries are struggling to formulate comprehensive strategies to adopt crypto-enabled tech in a streamlined fashion, with some even looking to implement blanket bans, such as India, Nigeria, we're seeing it across the board. The UAE is seemingly laying the foundation for a digital ecosystem. And I'm happy that Ripple will be there in the center of all of that, that forward thinking, progressive thinking, um, you know, type of technological view. Same thing with Singapore, Japan, Switzerland, UK. The US will catch up, I think, rather quickly when they're in fact forced to. And if they don't, too bad. I'm rooting for them, don't get me wrong, but they really have to step up. Right here, the UAE launched Blockchain Strategy 2021, pursuant to which 50% of government transactions will have been conducted using blockchain technology by 2021. Guys, we're already well into 2021. This is happening currently. And just think, even with the OCC in the United States, being able, like literally, banks are able to interconnect and like connect to public blockchain networks. When things happen, they can happen rather quickly. Just like that um, curve of exponential growth that I've posted on my Instagram with success. 
The UAE Regulatory Difference Regulated crypto exchanges will launch in the next few months with ESCA regulation. Local banks should be more open to crypto transactions on local bank accounts. Incubators and accelerators are supporting crypto companies here, now, and will continue to do so. The government is very supportive of blockchain tech. Love that. This is actually a really well-written article by Cointelegraph. Usually I'm uh, a little picky, but I did like everything in the information reports that they actually link everything here. All right, now the good stuff. Anderzel X underscore Anderson and shared by XRP Bite a Dip. I thought that was a hilarious name, by the way. Greg Kidd, as we know, one of the best. He owns 1% of the supply of XRP, by the way. He was formerly on the reserve, on the reserve board of the Federal Reserve. Um, thanks to him and his connections as well, early investor, Twitter, Global ID, you guys know. He goes on to quote and says, think of Ripple Labs as like a combination between a central bank and a sovereign wealth fund. I'm going to show you this clip, but just to kind of give you a backstory, on his LinkedIn, of course, Global ID, if you don't know it, look into it. If you don't know what Uphold is working on, look into it. I encourage you guys to check this out. Super exciting. We're going to go back into the time machine and just take a peek. Senior Analyst, Federal Reserve Board, okay? We can see also, and this is a thing that Digital Asset Investor always points out, and I really appreciate it, is this Promontory Financial Group, PFG. They are known as a shadow regulator in the space. Notice that he was also a consultant director for this organization for nine years. And we can see he joined Ripple Labs. He was quoted to say when he found out about Ripple Labs when he was playing a card game or poker perhaps, he said it was like Moses parting the seas, like nothing that's ever been done before. Um... I think he personally is a very smart gentleman and knows what's going on. I don't want to over speculate, but these are just some of the caliber of people that Ripple has working for them and backing them. So you have to understand that his network is extremely powerful too. It's not just him. When you invest in a technology, I ask, is it going to change the world? Is it going to help people? And am I comfortable investing in these people, not just the tech? And I am in this case, absolutely. All right. So I want to play this clip, listen up, and I love this. So thank you so much for sharing this XRP by the dip. Labs as like a combination between a central bank and a sovereign wealth fund. It has a finite number of XRP and it can give those out to help get the network started. Um, if we give them all away, then they're no longer there. If they rise in value, then the company has that value on its balance sheet and, and that has been very helpful for us basically because the, the, the XRP have gone up in value. So we've been able to sponsor a number of R&D efforts with that digital currency. Um, we, um, on the, the business model about how Ripple actually makes money, so the only, if, if you're familiar with the company Red Hat, which takes Linux, which is an open source protocol, and helps basically package that up and train and provide support to corporations, that's very much Ripple's model. So we would help financial institutions basically adopt, integrate, use, all right, and before you guys start freaking out about even MoneyGram stopping their use of like RippleNet or on-demand liquidity, I should say, listen to the CEO of MoneyGram. He put out that clip and it was um, shared by Bank XRP on Twitter. I did retweet it, massive thread, and just informing everybody, like everything, like he, he loves the use of on-demand liquidity, loves RippleNet, they're just simply waiting. So I'm not personally wor worried. I know people will freak out um, and you can sell your XRP. You're not doing me any favor. I will just keep buying it up. All right, so Greg Kidd, LinkedIn. Right here, this, so this is shared by Arturo Portilla, former owner of XRP Center, huge page on Twitter, and also he is, per right here, a Mexican tax and fintech lawyer, so I always appreciate his insight. Seems like a, a very, um, you know, well-spoken individual. So we know Ripple X LLC also has been registered now in Colorado. Besides, we already talked about Ripple Markets in Wyoming LLC, all good and great. We can see that they registered as a transmitter and dealer in FX. So states of MSB activities, all very interesting. Now I'm going to read his speculation on the right. Take it with a grain of salt, but I do want to share it. So for all of you who are asking, what does this all mean? The short answer is, I don't know. XRP to the entity that sells the XRP held by Ripple is also registered before the FinCEN as a money transmitter in California and New York. Notice FinCEN again, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. We know DAJ or DOJ, excuse me, in FinCEN called XRP a virtual currency in like what, 2015? Not a security. Um, that's one of the regulatory bodies in the United States. So interesting. So what do you think the SEC is really going to do on a going forward basis? I just cannot wait. Once we have this, there's not, there's not going to be any more BS and glass ceilings held over the price of XRP. 
If I had to speculate why RippleX has registered MSB money service business activities in all the US states' territories, I'd say it's because they have finally decided to provide a service that will require them to engage directly with final consumers versus only providing softwares to FIs, financial institutions. That's interesting, and um, we can see right here, still this is pure speculation and the registries before the FinCEN could mean anything really. Love that. So all in all, I am actually very, very interested in what this all means. All right, touching on this. So Bank XRP, MasterCard and Island Pay launched the world's first central bank digital currency linked card. Notice thou Rathar, this is just a general purpose retail CBDC. They are wholesale as well, um, you know, solving real problems. Just another example, as we know, of the public and private sector teaming up and showing what's possible to innovate payments. It's not just all about XRP. It's not just about your favorite digital asset. It's about this entire ecosystem. When they future proof and get all of this going, it'll actually help the adoption and have a rippling effect of everybody interoperating in the future. And I know a lot of people you know understand that fine right here stripe names digital currency advocate former bank of england which is a paid ripple net customer their governor mark carney or a former governor he actually has joined the board for stripe so very interesting and um, we remember his commentary years ago we've shown it it's viral on youtube talking about that i always butcher the pronunciation talking about um like a hegemonic currency um hegemony type of uh, supreme currency, talking about synthetic assets, central bank digital currencies, saying the dollar's day is the US or the reserve status of the dollar is dying. There's going to be new players in whether you're referencing, you know, Facebook Libra and their rebranding or Ripple or any other medium bridge asset. It's literally just explaining, you know, what we've been talking about for years and years and years. And not to get political, um, I, I'm not political on this channel whatsoever. I am here to get a return on my investment whether that upsets you or not. But he, you know, literally disrespected or kind of insulted the U.S. dollar reserve status. And typically when he did that years ago, you would have, you know, Steve Mnuchin or Donald Trump kind of, you know, go after somebody or make kind of a comment back. But they never did. Um, I believe they're kind of just all, you know, buddy, buddy. This gentleman is very well versed. So what do you guys believe? I just think that this is just proof that we are one step closer to digitalization and further adoption of distributed ledger tech, which means adoption of crypto assets. All right, right here. So Tesla, I'm just going to read this headline. We get the gist. Tesla has already profited more than $1.5 billion from their Bitcoin buy. And that's overall more than all of their 2020 car sales. Yikes. I know you guys, you know, easily like just think when you put in billions of dollars and the market goes up 10%, you really don't need much of a push to and if it's liquid enough to get an ROI. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, guys, then I'll finish up with some Ripple rants if I have time. XRP underscore Crow, this is Status, and I retweet as well, or I didn't retweet this one, oops. I'll retweet that, and let me mute this. Um, so how to check the validity of your Spark token claim. I encourage you guys to check this out if you have claimed Spark, kind of giving you little helpful infographics to get used to this. All right, I encourage you guys to, if you have not claimed um, your Spark token with your XRP holdings yet, um, you still can. You still have a few months. I encourage you guys to look. There's dozens and dozens of tutorials on YouTube for step by step. I don't need to bore you with the details. I think um, I feel like there's like five channels that have already done it. I know Working Money Channel did a good one too. So if you guys have time to go look at that, I think XRP Bags, um, a variety of people have done tutorials to help the community out. So I highly recommend looking into that. Um, and just keep in mind, guys, this is just another day in the life. I hate waiting um, as much as the next guy. It's much more fun making videos if we could just keep going straight up and straight up forever. Um, but all in all, I, I like being a contrarian investor. I like being the black sheep. I like being the the underdog in this space with you guys. So I, I enjoy that most altcoin holders, even huge people, like I love Algo, Q and T, H bar, but I know for a fact that some of the people in the community that hold those assets follow me and they probably think I'm crazy for holding XRP as one of my biggest bags. And I just kind of, I just smile at that because I know, I know what's coming. It's just another day in the life. Um, you know, they can have their opinions, but do not congratulate us and act like XRP or like us holders got lucky when there's clarity and when in fact price does move and we're actually scaling and solving more problems for real customers at scale, not just $2 billion in transactions, but when RippleNet or ODL gets to that $750 billion value mark. It's something that will happen. This has been in the works for years and years and years. We have backing by some of the biggest organizations. So it's just a complete joke to me. Um, all in all, also... I know a lot of people, you know, blindly buy assets. Please do your own research. If I say HBAR, Algorand, um, don't just take my word for it. Go read about it. So 
read through the token distribution model. Go read through Spark and understand how many months and how your tokens will come to you. You're not getting, you know, if you claimed 100,000 Spark tokens, you're not going to get 100,000 all in one batch. They want to distribute them over time so that we don't dump on the network. They want to incentivize us to start making money and have passive income opportunities so we can keep this network growing and grow in value. And that's exactly how Ripple operates. They could have dumped their XRP in 2018 when XRP was $3 plus, but they didn't. Why? Because they're grown ups they have that long-term vision and they understand the success case for xrp it's all or nothing so if they're successful three dollars will look like a drop in the bucket we're talking you know fifty dollars hundred dollars a thousand dollars per xrp with the successful case of mass adoption and then once it's at a higher value Ripple doesn't even need Ripple-funded ecosystems to go and build. There's going to be new builders. There's going to be new use cases. There's going to be new hedge funds and new institutional interest in XRP or any highly liquid asset for that matter. So I am beyond excited every single day. I'm not to try to pump you guys up and get you motivated, but sometimes I think people need it because we are in the most exciting market in history so that's just something i believe in so overall guys hope you enjoyed be sure to like this video i'll probably try to get another one out and i will catch you soon